Hello. Hello. Everybody. Hi. Scott? How's it going, Joe? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we want to welcome uh, this morning to this week at the Communist Party, uh, Joel Fishman. Joel is a member of the uh, party's leadership, vice chair and the head of its political action committee. And uh, I think chair of the party in the state of Connecticut, the great state of Connecticut. So uh, good morning, Joel, and, and welcome. We're very happy to have you this morning. Good morning, uh, Joe and Scott. I'm, I'm real thrilled to be here. Great, great. Um, so well, a lot's been happening uh, in the, we wanted to talk a little bit about the presidential race. You're paying a, attention to it. I see Bernie Sanders raised $10 million in a couple of days and all of the candidates are out and campaigning all over the place. So how does it look to you? Is it um, more or less what you expect at this stage or, or what? Well, I think it's a big positive. It's something we really haven't seen before. The whole array of candidates that's come forward. And by the way, I read that, uh, that huge amount of money that came in immediately for Bernie, that 40% of it was from people who had never given before. Oh, wow. That's quite interesting. You know, we, I'll have to check that out, but that's what I, uh, what I, what I read quickly. Okay. Um, so, well, you might want to look, look directly into the camera. You're looking a little bit too, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, How is this? So just look a little bit to your, uh, that's a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, so. uh, on my screen, I'm looking right at you, Joe. <laughs> so I'll, so don't, I'll don't look at me because the camera is right at the top of your computer. This should be oh, right. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Thanks for the tip. So um, here we for have the a wide time. array of candidates. And yes. um, what else? What about the well, what's, issues what's, that they're running on? Right, exactly. What's so beautiful is that um, now we're talking about uh, Medicare for all, we're talking about a Green New Deal, uh, we're talking about taxing the rich, and I hope we can get into their uh, cutting the military budget, because if we don't do that, we can't do the rest. So these things are changing the dynamic of what is being discussed. So now you have in Congress, the Medicare for all bill being introduced, I believe yesterday, anyway, this week, with over a hundred co-sponsors. Wow! It was, uh, it was one of Connecticut's representatives that uh, was one of that was one of the initial sponsors of the bill, right? That's right. Below. Yes, and uh, Senator uh, Richard Blumenthal. Actually, this is an interesting story about Senator Blumenthal because um, uh, he was so enraged uh, after the election of '45, and he was so inspired by the resistance that he actually became part of it. And you may remember that the initial resistance uh, after the Women's March was around uh, saving healthcare for millions of people. And so when he first would appear at these rallies and somebody would ask him, would you support Medicare for all? Well, I'll consider it, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, within about a month, he was opening his talks calling for Medicare for all. Wow. So, so it shows the power of organizing and people in action. And it shows that um, uh, the needs of the people can be met if they're organized for. Right. So the movement kind of pushed him to the uh, left. And, That's uh, correct. And uh, I was wondering about that because, you know, I was talking to a young woman who's a friend of mine the other day, and um, she's a veteran of many struggles. And she was um, kind of concerned about that some of the Democratic candidates, uh, including the uh, women, were kind of not all that strong with regard to kind of centrist in, in their platforms. And, uh, and uh, but I thought that there was more or less kind of uh, agreement on some basic issues uh, this go around. And, so it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, when the uh, debates start during the, uh, uh, well, I guess there's gonna be a debate sometime uh, in June or something like that. They scheduled some. Uh, oh, you're you're uh, ahead of me on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> but I uh, the level of debate is so much higher now. And uh, part of it is because of the uh, Trump administration policies. 
Mm. And the way people are hurting, people are hurting. And so there has to be a response to that. And our role within all of this is to really build on those more advanced issues at the grassroots and at the same time, the broadest unity, because we are in a very dangerous situation. It's very yeah. dangerous, as we saw last week during the, or uh, well, this week rather, the those hearings down in Washington with Mr. Cohen um, kind of revealed uh, the uh, depth of the danger, the way that the uh, right-wing Republicans performed was just outrageous, I thought. Did you have a chance to watch any of it? A little bit, I did. Yeah. And uh, well, they, they were afraid for things to come out, so they're trying to discredit him and, and sure. whatnot. Sure. But uh, I was so impressed by, um, I didn't see all of it, but the parts I saw, I was so impressed by Cummings, Eli Representative Elijah Cummings at the end, who chaired mm -hmm. the committee. Yes. And he made this incredible heartfelt statement about this isn't about Trump or, or anything else. This is about Congress fulfilling its role mm. and making sure that we uh, have a democracy. You know, mm. he, he really gave because they were trying to say, oh, the Democrats are only doing this against Trump. They're not holding any other hearings. He says, what are you talking about? Our first hearing was on health care. Our second hearing was on voting rights. And we're handling this too. So well, I, I think this is, uh, and th this is really demonstrates that you know the the two sets of issues are connected. Um, I think there, there's this temptation a lot of the time to say that you know uh, the issue of you know Trump's various uh, uh, possibly you know criminal actions, his his massive corruption, whatever is you know not is kind of sidelined in in, in favor of talking about the. Um, these advanced uh, political demands, Medicare for all, things like that. It's actually a, it's a package deal. The fight for democracy, the fight for, you know, every person's vote to be counted, um, the fight against, you know, a little uh, tiny criminal clique uh, that wants to control the country is part of the fight for, uh, for raising the minimum wage for Medicare for all. It's, the, the struggle for democracy is extremely broad. Absolutely. You know, I saw an interesting um, article the other day that the headline of it was that the left wing candidates in the race, Bernie Sanders and um, Elizabeth Warren, and uh, well, they just didn't mention her. They mentioned also uh, Ms. Ocasio or Cortez. They said that the left wing candidates are center in the sense that their issues are the issues okay. that represent the feeling of the majority of the American people. Do you think Absolutely. that that's right? Absolutely. I thought that was wonderful. I saw the same uh, article, I believe. And um, I wanted to come back, though, to this point about the interconnection, because what Trump administration is trying to do now is stir up anti-communism, anti-socialism like that. Why yeah. are they doing it? They're doing it to stop passage of raising the minimum wage, stop passage of Medicare for all, stop uh, comprehensive immigration reform, stop the Green New Deal. That's what this is really all about. And they wanna continue their war on Venezuela and around the world. So they're using this scare tactic, but guess what? We're in a different time today than we were in the 1950s. Absolutely. And that red baby ain't going to fly. It ain't going to fly. And if we do our job right, it can actually flip around and uh, more people will come to embrace socialism and to join the Communist Party as well. We hope. Now, what about the, the, the independent role of the party in this election process? Because, you know, we get a lot of criticism from some on the left that we're too tied to the Democrats and that we don't have an independent posture. How would you, how do you react to that? Well, there's a few different ways to approach it um, that I'd like to, I don't know if I have time, but uh, for one thing. You got the whole program. I mean, we <laughs> for one thing, um, you know, we, we don't look at just individual candidates. We look at building movements. We want to be where the people are and then bring it forward from there. And uh, right now, there's a tremendous amount of excitement in the country about what's happening. You can see 
with, you know, with all the newly elected, uh, so diverse and whatnot. Um, and they're taking up issues. Maybe it's not all the way to socialism, but they're important issues that are going to affect people's lives right now. And we have to win victories because if you elect and then you don't win victories, people people will just uh, won't come out again. Let's put Very it that way. Uh, so that's that's one aspect of it. Another I'm thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that that on this issue of independence. Um, you know, Lenin in uh, Two Tactics of Social Democracy in the Democratic Revolution, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite essays. Uh, if you haven't read it, go for it. Um, uh, he talks about the difference between independence in name and real independence. Independence in name is, you know, we do our own thing. We run, you know, the, the, the Communist Party is separate and we don't want to get our hands dirty with anyone else. Real independence is you know, for the working class is, are we able to put a working class mark on the political life of the country through participation in these major struggles? Um, and that's, that's exactly what's happening. Medicare for all and raising the minimum wage and all these things you've talked about, they don't, yeah, they don't come from, you know, it's not uh, the ruling class dreaming these things up and offering them. This is, a, this is what it looks like to put a working class stamp on the movement. And we've been part of that. Just to follow through on that point for a moment, um, I'll give an example here in, in New Haven of how a building grassroots movement around an issue can really affect electoral victories and enable progress for, for working class people. So fitting into this idea of, of a broad scope of what we mean by independence. Um, and here in New Haven, there's an, a big issue about jobs. There's a jobs crisis. Uh, Yale has become the dominant employer. Um, they do not hire uh, very much from the surrounding communities, which are primarily African-American and Latino and high unemployment and low income. And so there's been a big movement in our city around the jobs crisis. Um, we contributed with the idea of jobs for youth, jobs for all. That has now become a major uh, theme uh, within the city among the alders and whatnot. But anyway, this campaign around jobs enabled the election of a super majority on our board of alders, which has 30 members, a super majority that are either shop stewards or Really? Uh, a union officers are actually active in the labor movement. Wow. And it really is making a difference on what we can accomplish. Of course, you also see the limitations of capitalism within this whole process. So it's very yeah. exciting and very yeah. unique. But that was just an example to follow. It's a good through. one. It's a good one. We're going, we're, it's a very good one. We're going to have to wrap up in just a couple of minutes, but we want to remind everybody that we are preparing for our national convention that is taking place in uh, Chicago in June. And um, we're uh, counting our membership now um, and uh, we'll be holding state conventions in a couple of months. We're in the middle of a pre-convention discussion period on our new draft program. We invite everybody to go to our website at cpusa.org and download the program and read it and send in your views. Uh, you, can, you can write comments here on Facebook and they will appear both here and on our website. And so we want to have a rigorous conversation. Have you started talking about the program in Connecticut yet? Well, so uh, we are starting through these webinars that these uh, monthly webinars, but uh, if I could if I could refer to the Political Action Commission because it's one of the things I wanted to bring out in the commission, uh, we're having some lively discussions because we're reviewing the five years since the last convention of our work and the uh, development of strategy and tactics, and so we're taking up this challenge about uh, communist candidates and uh, elected officials That's and you. you know yeah what kind of new approaches can we develop that are helpful? And we do have elected officials and appointed officials around the country uh, not having run uh, on the Communist Party ticket. Uh, we do need that in the mix. 
and we need more on every level uh, because uh, here is where we get experience and where we can you know, bring our program in a different way, uh, working in conjunction with our grassroots organizing. So we're very excited about it. We're also planning to develop a, um, an electoral, an election platform, mm. uh, hopefully in time for the convention. And uh, we, want, we want to try and uh, make our contribution to this wonderful 100th anniversary convention coming up in June. And, and if, I could, if I could just add, uh, let us, um, uh, you know, we really want stuff to post for this pre-convention discussion. So um, if the members of the political action committee would be, would be willing, um, you know, give us a, a sense of the, the conversation that you're having. Could be a video, could be audio, could be, Written. We encourage everybody to do that. You can send uh, materials to discussion at cpusa.org. Um, can either be a link to a, a video or um, you know an article, something like that. Uh, you know, I heard last night that there was a bottleneck that people have been sending in comments to the program committee itself, and they didn't know what to do with it. So I said, please send us the copy. We will post it. We're looking for it. Um, <laughs> Great, so uh, we are uh, about to uh, uh, close. It's, a, it's a, an exciting moment. Um, and we're, there's a lot of big and important struggles taking place in the country. Um, and uh, the candidates are showing their wares and putting forward their uh, program. I think that we welcome the entrance of Sanders into the race. Uh, along with a number of important women uh, candidates, and there's a labor candidate in the mix, uh, strongly supported by labor at the very uh, least. And uh, so we'll see, you know, what happens as we go forward. Uh, Joelle, any, any parting shots be, before we go? Well, this has been great. I guess I'll announce that uh, the commission has uh, updated and just released a new edition of um, the uh, immigration myth versus fact. And uh, I'm so excited that in Iowa, a big order for the print edition came already because they said, we're getting all these FaceTime with the uh, candidates and we, and we wanna up the ante on the understanding around this whole immigration issue. So we, we, we ought to have a show on that issue. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be having it to you, Joe, very shortly to post on cpusa.org. Excellent. We'll post it on People's World, and we do have the print edition if anybody wants to order that. It's such an important issue because anti immigrant racism and racism in general has become a central <laughs> organizing principle of uh, these neo fascist minded people in the White House, you know? Yes. And, uh, you know, it's it's just outrageous, and uh, it just gets worse every day. Uh, I, I saw how that uh, congressman from North Carolina brought that black woman up as a prop. You know, during the call, it was just ugly what he did, and the, and the uh, congresswoman from Michigan was right to uh, point point that out. So we have to fight for unity, but to do it, you got to take a principled stand against racism. You know, Absolutely. otherwise it's just not going to happen. Well, Joelle, we're so happy to have you this morning. It's uh, been a great time. Scott, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Scott, um, have a good weekend. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, and uh, we should invite some people to talk about this immigration issue. Absolutely, yeah. I think that we have to, we have to uh, dig into it. And I'm so glad we're talking about candidates. You know, we really can't be a political party if we don't have candidates. So with that, Take care and uh, we will see you soon. Bye everybody. See you soon.